All right, this is lesson five. Uh, we start a new fast track series each week. This is meant to be complimentary and go along with the fast track videos. Again, a new group every Monday. It can be the same group. Doesn't matter to me. We're teaching the program uh, repetitiously, the, the fast track stuff. We're doing it through, os we're, we're learning through osmosis. Uh, we've got written documentation. We've got videos. But the best way to learn information is one heart to another. And that's what we try to do each week. Uh, bring a friend with you. They don't even have to give an email address to tune in. They can go to myshaboleth.com, and we are broadcasting live there uh, so that people can tune in and, and get some help. Uh, and if you're new here and uh, you're lost right now, reach out to Lisa, and Lisa will get you the, the weekly videos so that you can watch them. You don't have to be a member, but it is better to be a member because you'll get access to all the stuff we're going to look at in just a few minutes. Before we get started with this last lesson where we're just going to talk through, make sure everybody understands the basics of uh, meal ideas, combining for, for good, tasty, delicious meal ideas. Any questions from anyone about fast track, beginner information, anybody? All right, so I'm going to go, and just a reminder, just keep bringing you right to the right place, bring you to the well. We go into the website, we go to dashboard, and then we we hit fast track tab, and we go down, and we find our videos. These are our videos. We want to go through these videos, take the test, pass the test, earn the badge. What I'm doing here is meant to uh, complete these videos. You could do this program with nothing but these videos, and, and they're not even me, so you don't even have to listen to me if you, if you don't like my southern accent. So you've got these where we go over water, journaling, the perfect day, all that stuff, which we've done all week. Uh, and now we're going to bring it home, and we're going to look at some of these meal ideas. So I'm going to pull up our advanced combination chart. I prefer to work off of it than the beginner one. It's all the same, and I, I like I just like this chart a lot better. So I'm going to pull up also a worksheet. You might want to use a piece of paper, and we're going to go through and uh, pulling up digital worksheets. Whoops. All right, so we're just going to come up with some meal ideas here. And you, you experienced people, you can help out our little community. Okay, so we're looking at our combination chart, all right? So we began to categorize whole foods here. We categorized them and... Once we know where a food, what category it belongs, we can start putting some foods together. So I'm just going to name a few, and let's see if y'all know where to put them. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. God bless you, Sherry. Lisa, do you see Will's comment? Okay, so where do where do uh, tomatoes go? What category? Three. They go in a category three. Is there any other category that they could be in? Uh, Darla nailed it. Darla's already on it. Three and a condiment. What's the difference? A category three is a full portion, like a half up to a whole tomato. A con diced tomatoes as a condiment on a whole food meal is not going to be a problem. So where does that come into play? An egg white omelet, you got spinach, cheese omelet, and then you throw some diced tomatoes on there. No big deal. It's like negligible numbers of calories. So if I'm wanting tomato, 
I'm wanting it not as a condiment, but I'm wanting sliced tomato. Uh, I'm having a whole tomato. I've sliced it up. I've got some pepper on it. That's what I like. Uh, could I have, could I make out of that a BLT? You would need yes. a, you would a need bigger. a two with it. Go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, be your condiment. And if you chose, you know, some people like mayonnaise on that. So you just have to be a little bit cautious with how much you use a beak. Yes. So let Not me give the you, condiment roll. These little nuances I'm about to give you, they make all the difference in the world. Let me pause this for a minute. So I'm using a continuous glucose monitor to, to learn more about myself, uh, how my body reacts to food. And I have nailed it. I'm not bragging. I have nailed it. I've been right about all this stuff. We already knew it was right. Science tells us it's right. But when I say like there's nuances, this kind of scares people off sometimes. They're afraid to do something wrong. But if you follow the shield and you understand the shield, you won't go astray. The more calories we have from that tomato, the more protein and fiber we're going, all these little things, these nuances mean a lot. For example, you, true or false, I could have category four turkey bacon, category two bread, fat-free cheese, and an entire tomato. I could do that. True or false? Cindy said no. Why, Cindy? Well, that'd be a four, two, three. Exactly. But we found out we could use a tomato as a condiment. Could I use category four bacon with approved category two bread and just a slice of tomato for a BLT? Then you're good. The difference is the tomato is still there, but the more calories from that tomato means the more carbs then we got the fat from the bacon. Does that make sense? It's those little distinctions that will, will give you better results weekly, monthly. It does make a difference. I'm seeing it with my glucose monitor. It makes a big difference. Like last night, I ate a zero, I ate two hot dogs. I ate a hot dog uh, and using the hero bun, and I ate a hot dog using a category three bun. And the difference was like triple the blood sugar impact. And you think that may, that's not too, be, too big of a difference. So, right, it's just blood sugar. The calories was actually less in the category three bun. Did you hear that? The calories were less, but the blood sugar impact was three times higher. So what does that mean based upon what we learned? How long is it going to be before I can get back into EFB? Was that worth it? And in fact, the soft hero bun was a lot better than the category three whole wheat bun. So it's all these little things, they add up. Aim small, miss small. It's the little foxes that spoil the vines. So let me ask you another, another food, put it in the category for me. I've got an ear of corn. What category is an ear of corn? Three. It's a category three. I've got an ear of corn. It's a category three. That's the perfect portion on that because we don't eat the cob. So I've got my ear of corn and um, I'm going to have, I've got steak, ribeye steak, eight ounces of ribeye, corn, and a salad with approved dressing. Is that allowed? And if we're new and we go over here, so I see some yeses. It's actually not allowed. So what is a ribeye steak? Category four. Four. Ah, oh, I see the hand signal of joy. Yep. Where do you see on this chart any fours and threes? Where do you see that? It's not on there. Holiday. Now, what what if what if what if I did this? 
What if I had an eight ounce? That's a little too much, but let's say I'm pushing the envelope with my portion. I'm having eight ounces of ribeye steak. If it's 12 ounces, I better cut some off. I'm having eight ounces of ribeye steak. I'm having some asparagus and I've got a little side salad with zero calorie salad dressing. And I've got a few of those little pickled corns, those little baby corns. Is that allowed? Yeah, those have no calories. Those, those that's a com that's going to be fine. What if it's just got some corn kernels on the salad? Just a few, like a tablespoon of corn corn kernels. That would be allowed because that's just a condiment. That's so negligible, you can use it as your condiment. But when I have an entire portion of corn, then I'm going to get that blood sugar impact. And then the fat bus has to come to lower my blood sugar. So when the fat bus arrives, what three things are taking place that cause me a problem with that steak? Fat storage. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to easily store that fat. Now watch this. So I had corn on the cob and steak. I had a hollow meal. That was my hollow meal. For dinner, let's say that I had um, chicken breast. Let me take that back. Let's say that I had 93% lean ground beef hamburger patty with green beans and Worcestershire sauce. Was that perfect? It was, but what did I do earlier in the day that caused a problem? What is still in my system at high levels due to the corn? Insulin. Insulin. Is the insulin going to more efficiently store fat from that hamburger steak patty later in the day? Yep. So when I say it impacts you for two days, I mean it. That doesn't mean it's as bad because it's tapering down. It's why continuous good blood, blood glucose ratings are so important. We don't want those high, the, the higher the blood glucose goes, the more release of insulin we need, then the insulin is going to store, store, store. Is everybody with me? Next one. I've got potatoes. I've got a third of a cup of white potato Chicken breast that I grilled and put stubs, calorie-free, almost calorie-free barbecue sauce on. And I've got a mixed vegetable medley, broccoli and cauliflower that I roasted on the grill. Chicken, broccoli, cauliflower, potato. The potato's got zero calorie butter spray and a little fat-free sour cream on it. Well, what kind of chicken? Chicken breast, white meat. Okay, then yes. Yep, I can do that. I can do that as long as I control my portion of potato. If I have a quarter cup, that's great for weight loss. If I have a half a cup, that's more like maintenance. Is maintenance a good strategy to have during your weight loss strategy sometime when there's a meal sitting in front of you that you really want and desire? Yes. You can come in and out of the weight loss maintenance. You just need to know Okay, this meal I'm not making any progress, but I'm not going to I'm not going to commit a turnover. All right, next let me ask you about this one. I got pinto beans. What category are pinto beans? Lauren is right. It's a category six superfood. So can I have the following? Can I have grilled grilled chicken breast, some uh, approved barbecue sauce, and some pinto beans? One side of my plate, I got my grilled chicken. The other side, I've got pinto beans with some Goya ham seasoning in it. Yeah, yep, I can do that. What if I take some of the pinto beans off of the plate and make room for some green beans? Can I do that? Yep, sure can. 
Next, could I do the following? Could I have, could I have on a six to eight inch plate, not piled up any thicker than the thickest part of my hand, could I have a little bit of grilled chicken, a little bit of steak, some sirloin steak with some broccoli and a potato? No, no. What about this? Could I have chicken breast, sirloin steak, broccoli, and squash on a portion plate? Absolutely. Absolutely. Could I do this? Could I have a portion plate of grilled chicken, steak? Let me take that back. Could I have a portion plate of shrimp? Grilled chicken, all of it's grilled using only approved condiments, broccoli, and a potato. Yes. Could I take half of that meal, just eat half of it, and call it a snack? Yes. Could I take, could I eat, so I've got, let me repeat it so you know where we're at. We've got shrimp grilled chicken, let's say green beans and potato. Could I eat the shrimp, the chicken, the broccoli, and save my potato for later and eat it? No. You'd be eating that potato by itself. So you have to take exactly half the meal. Remember the carbs, if you'll think about it like this, we're taking the carbs and we're packaging them in protein and fiber. So let me give it to you in a way I like to think about it. So white rice, if I eat white rice, what kind of day do we call that? We call that a holiday, don't we? We call it a holiday or a hollow meal. If I eat long grain brown rice with a lean protein and fibrous carb, so if I have chicken breast, green beans, and long grain brown rice, that's a one, two, three, that's approved. However, not however, but here's, here's the long grain brown rice. Inside of that long grain brown rice, there's white rice, it's called endosperm. That's the part causing the high elevation of your blood sugar. Surrounding that is the bran and the germ. The reason we can have long grain brown rice is because the blood flow has got to break through the bran and the germ to get through to the endosperm. So it's slower blood sugar elevation. When they strip long grain brown rice, grains of the bran and the germ, nothing's left but the glucose, the sugar part. Does that make sense? So when we're eating carbohydrate or fruit, technically, when because it's all going into the same place, we're just surrounding it. See, I'm not even smart. It's just called you Harley wisdom. We're surrounding it with protein and fiber. Just like long grain brown rice is surrounded by the fiber, the fibrous part, we're now taking the carb, the potato, the corn, the tomato, the longer we're taking all that and we're surrounding it with protein and fiber, Will brought up an excellent, excellent advance. We don't wanna to get too hung up on it because it'll turn people off. But he asked, what should we eat first? So in other words, if you've got chicken breast, green beans and potato, what should we eat first? Not the, not the potato. You wanna go on and start eating the protein part, getting the blood flow, then eat the potato so the potato's surrounded, you see? Because if you eat the carbohydrate, you get a faster blood sugar rise quicker. So it's, it's all important, but all of this, if it confuses you, it's all surmised. It's all surmised just by using the shield. Once you master how to use your Shibola shield, it's game over if you've got the wherewithal to use it. All right, so I'm going to go into one more thing for our members. If you're new here, come back Monday. We start at Monday. We start a new lesson.
a new series Monday, Monday through Friday. Tomorrow at 1030, we'll have our We Fixed It class. We take recipes and fix them, get those recipes to Larry and Lisa. Again, uh, we're trying to be unique here. That's what we feel called to. Those of you that have done other weight loss programs, is this different? Is it different? Do you think it's different? More educational, I hope. Good. Good. So, going to our dashboard. By the way, please consider becoming a partner, and we need our partners. We need our partners. Need you. Please pray. We gotta get we gotta get it up. We gotta get it up fast. All right, so we're here. Uh faithfully fit, test meal planning. Keep testing this thing, working with it. So I've got some uh medium intensity meals. I'm gonna serve four. I've got my favorite foods marked, and then I generate. Play with this thing, let it learn. Every time it produces a meal, then we get it on the back end and we can look and see if you're getting weird things. I appreciated Joy's feedback the other day. It's coming along. Still got a long way to go with it, but it is coming along. I go to my meal plan. Oh, still taking some time here. Hold on. It's still thinking. So I go here from yesterday's and it gives me uh, the perfect combinations. Uh, shrimp and broccoli stir fry, fry with whole grain pasta, lobster pepper bell salad, turkey berry spinach salad, all this based upon your likes. We're working on it so that you can mark, even mark the foods that you have in inventory so you don't have to go buy any. Plus it's based upon what you like. Here's grilled pork and cabbage stir fry. Uh, you got pork tenderloin for four, three cups of cabbage, MCT oil, apple cider vinegar, mustard seeds, instructions, tells you the serving, 56 grams of protein, eight carbs, 12 grams of fat, perfection. So these are great ways to put yourself together some meals that are perfectly combined and stick with whole food, organic food, clean foods. The meal planner is just going to get better every week, but the more the more iterations it gets, the better it will get, quicker it will get, and it will learn you too. Questions or comments about anything before we go? Don't forget, 1 o'clock today, we won't be doing a 1030. It's Friday. Um, I'm getting ready for several uh, meetings, and then 1 o'clock, we've got Sandy and Charles, and we'll also try to be ready uh, for those that want to follow along with Sandy and Charles, that you'll be able to do that. We're going to have some uh, bi-weekly or monthly weigh-ins, accountability weigh-ins with me virtual, where you'll come and and get it, you know, get the accountability and support that you need. A lot, a lot in that. So, uh, hey, tune in at one o'clock. Sandy and Charles, they've got good numbers to report. The cookbook is set to start shipping in uh, June. We're on schedule. We're on pace. It's uh, there's there's not a lot of me to go around, so it'll I'm I'm working eighteen to twenty hours a day right now, and that book it, I don't know what we would have done without that support that y'all gave us for the book. But I'll have to ship a few a day. Everybody will have their book, Lord willing, in June. It starts shipping June first. It's going to be a comprehensive, it's very comprehensive, um, over 100 meal ideas and recipes, the program detailed out. Uh, we're hoping that more people will support it. I think we've had a couple hundred people purchase it. Thank y'all. Karen's going to help with shipping. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Yes, the, the number, uh, the partner number, we will have partner meetings again now that uh, I, I kind of, I can give on, accurate, honest assessment of where we're at. Uh, there was so many unknowns, but yes, this is a real number. Um, we are at 303 partners. You know, our hope has always been to get a thousand partners. If we could get a thousand out of the 40,000 active people a month, 
then Shibboleth would be healthy. It would be a healthy program. But I got to get to 1,000 partners. Well, I'm at 303. The program has impacted, I, I thought, a couple hundred thousand lives over 20 years, and there's 40,000 people that log into the website. If you can come up with ideas of, of things that people would be willing to support us and, and partner with us over, uh, things we can do a better job, let us know, because sometimes I can't see the forest for the trees. Let me know what your needs are. Uh, the only thing I'm struggling with right now is time. Everybody wants one-on-ones for free, but it's a time thing. I just can't make the time right now to do the free one-on-ones. Uh, that's why we're doing the 12 to 20 live classes a week. But we are going to start um, the people that are going to do exactly what Charles and Sandy's doing. We are going to do some bi-weekly weigh-ins with them, kind of a pilot program, see how that goes. We may very well, Penny. We'll see how it goes. We, we may have more book sales once the book's in my hand in class, and uh, then we may need a little help. Appreciate that, that offer. Anybody else? Questions, comments? Can I explain the free classes? Okay, so we're not devaluing our members. Um, but what we are doing, what you see Monday through Friday is enough if people keep tuning in that they can learn the basics of nutrition and it can be a value to them. We don't want it to be a gimmick to get an email address and then market them to death, but we hope to get, get back in front of them so that they become a member. Uh, we've been algorithmed out basically on Facebook where I used to get a thousand views just like that. Now I, I might get 10. So it's, uh, they've told us, you know, it's your message. If you can change your message, you know, you and, and you can say the same thing, but in a different way, I can't break myself from talking about what I talk about. I, I've been doing it too long. So you can go, you can bring a friend, bring anybody. You can see we're live here right now. We're live and we'll be putting some resources under the video player for the new folks, the beginning folks. Uh, so bring them, let them learn. Right here, myshibboleth.com. No gimmicks. We're just teaching. We're teaching. And then those people that say, hey, this is the real deal, they'll become a member. Right now, it's $5 a month. I think that's fair. Travis, um, uh -huh. this is Daryl, and I'm driving. Sorry, but with what you just said, if we shared more from the uh, Shibboleth Facebook public page, would that help to break that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what breaks through the algorithms, unless you're putting out venomous content and we're not, it's just the our content has been flagged by social media, YouTube, Facebook, that it's offensive to the majority. So you have to let Facebook know that you like this type of content. They actually like my content from the standpoint they've selected us now to be one of the influencers that they pay for content because we have they they look at the affinity of the content so we have people that frequent our content so they're saying i don't have enough views that they would pay me anything but they selected us for that and what lets facebook know that you like this kind of content is you liking it tuning into it or sharing it and the best way to, to, uh, to break through the algorithms is your likes and your shares. And when you share it, that exposes it to other people within your circle of influence. One of the things that I'm hoping will help, Sergey is working on putting a, a, the up here, you see this share feature up here where you can easily share the homepage. He's working where you can do it with just the video so that you could just come here in the morning and share it and you could be promoting the live classes daily for those of you that want to. So we're turning our homepage instead of a beautiful piece of art, we're turning it into something where there's engagement. <clears throat> so it won't be as pretty, but it'll be engaging. We've got the prayer feature that's about to show up here where people can say they need help, they need prayer, 
the morning prayer, the evening prayer is going to be here. So uh, we're really trying to focus on, go double down, double in, double down on this is a ministry. And we're promoting Jesus Christ first, wellness second. Don't know how youngs feel about that, but it feels right in my heart to quit straddling a fence. It may not feel right in the bank account, but he says, don't live by sight. Anybody else? Whoever's that kitchen that is, that's beautiful. Kendra, Kendra's kitchen's beautiful. I love that. I'm going to screenshot it. One day when I can do it, I'm going to have a kitchen that looks like that. Everybody good? Y'all satisfied? Anything I can do to improve your journey? I, I, I always say that sincerely. I may not be able to, but I want to. I don't want to make assumptions. What, what do y'all need that I could help with? This life-saving mission. Other than get some eye cream. I see these bags. I'm going to have to get some Melaleuca eye cream. Right, Sandy? I, or I need to go get the Hollywood thing done. We love you like you are. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad <laughs> somebody does. Everybody good. All right. We appreciate you. We'll close this thing out in prayer. Anybody feel like closing us out in prayer? And then we'll come back, those that can, at one. Feel, just uh, don't, don't miss a blessing. I'm really trying to do what the Lord is having me to do in that. I want to help teach people the blessing in being obedient. There's something that you need to do. You can't always sit back idly. Sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone and you're missing a blessing every time the Lord puts something on you and you don't do it. So I'm not going to call a specific name, but anyone want to close us out in a word of prayer? Shy people, I'll do it. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, God, with thankful hearts. We come to you, God, with praise on our lips, thanking you for all that you are. Whether you ever did anything again or not, you've done it all on the cross at Calvary. When you said it is finished, it was finished. It's us that sometimes allows ourselves to make our bed in hell. We don't have to do that. We can come out of it the second that we decide to come out of it. You gave us the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and they cannot prevail over us, not in this life or in the life to come. And we thank you and we praise you for that. Father, we know that you're a present God. You're nowhere absent. And many of us think and feel that we have needs. Father, if those things that we need go along with your will, Father, we pray, God, that you give us the faith to believe that they'd be done. If they don't go along with your will, we'd rather your will be done than our will because you know best, Father. If there's anybody here struggling in a mighty way with anything, any addiction, any stronghold, I pray, God, that today would be the day that you overshadow them, that you bring conviction upon them, beautiful conviction, and then that they enjoy the beauty of repentance going in a different way. God, I'm so thankful that you called us to righteousness. I'm thankful that our righteousness is as filthy rags, but the righteousness that you've called to us is not of our own self, but it is in Jesus Christ, and it is the right way to live with love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and goodness and meekness and temperance and faith. Nowhere in there does it say that I should judge my brothers and sisters Nowhere in there does it say I should judge myself. In fact, 
your holy word says I'm not qualified to judge or even judge myself. So, Father, if anybody's caught up today with the heaviness and burden of guilt and regret, Father, I pray at some point today they might cry out and spare not. In the name of Jesus, Satan, get behind us. Be with us the rest of this day. Be with Charles and Sandy as they embark on this, this pursuit of wellness. I uh, just pray that you do a mighty work in their minds and hearts. We love you today, God. If any good things accomplished from anything that we've done or said here today, we'll bow our unworthy head and give you the praise for it all. It's in Jesus' name that we humbly pray and beg. Amen and amen. Thank y'all. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.